All right, let's talk a defensive end or a defensive lineman. The 49ers could take a 31 instead of an offensive tackle. Marshawn Neeland. You brought him to our, to our attention in your latest article on si.com slash NFL slash 49ers. Check it out. What should we know about him? He's the best edge setter, edge setter in, in the drafted edge, and that's something the Niners need. It's, that's what they have needed for a while now is somebody that can really set the edge at the edge. He's the best at it. His run stats are off the charts, and he's got a lot of good developmental tools. 6'3", you know, let me pull up everything on Neyland. 6'3", 276. Yeah, 6'3", 267. He's got 34 and a half inch arms, ran a 166'10", 475, 40, 418 in the shuttle, 702 in the three come. 37 pressures, six sacks, 17% pass rush win rate, 34% one-on-one -on -one win rate, and 35 stops, which is really high, very good number. So he's produced, and he's somebody that they're bringing in for a 30 visit and he brings the talent that they need. You know, this is one skill set they don't really have is mm -hmm. stopping the run at the edge. And so I think he's someone they're going to look at. He's getting a lot of buzz now. He's moving up. He was thought to be a late second. Now he's moved up in some to mid second to early second. So he's he's in ascendancy and we'll see where he goes. It's going to be interesting to see how the Niners can figure their D line. It's like that's a position they like to go eight deep at. They'll have yeah. entire series where they'll have all four backups on the on the field at once. And it seems like that's Chris Kasarik's sort of choice. That's how he likes to rotate players through. So we know their starters most likely will be Nick Bosa, Javon Hargrave, Malik Collins, Leonard Floyd. Now, what is the next four, the next wave of defensive linemen going to be? Your Turgros Matos is getting paid like he's going to be one of them. Sure. Uh, jo Jordan Elliott, those two for sure. And then after them, it's kind of murky. It could be Kevin Givens, I guess. No offense. I mean, he's just on a one-year deal for not that much money. And then Drake Jackson. Yeah, yeah. And we don't really know. It's just So a, D it, a DN would actually could play for the 49ers. Maybe he wouldn't play yeah. a lot, 25, 30% of the snaps. Well, but, but unless he you could be in Drake. Yeah. Well, but with Neyland, it, it's someone who he could start in the base defense and, and be part of your run D and be real solid. And, and that's something they definitely need. And so and we'll see. The history works for him also. If they take D-line in this draft, it'll be four times in eight years that they take D-line with their first pick. Well, I think what's tough about projecting where the Niners are, what the Niners are going to do on their D-line this year is because Staley's here. Brandon Staley's here. And I think they're going to be doing new things on the D-line. Like, is your tour gross Matos going to start? Or is Leonard Floyd going to start? Or are the Niners going to start doing some simulated pressures on first and second down? Because it seems like that simulated pressure thing is like the whole new wave in the NFL. And yeah. the Seahawks want to run it. And the Niners want to run it. And the Chiefs are running it. And the Ravens are running it. So that would be a big thing. And I think it's possible Leonard Floyd starts so you could see them do those kind of things, drop him into coverage, yeah. bring a corner or a safety or a linebacker as the fourth rusher instead. I think we're going to see that. So in which case, you know, like is your tour gross Matos going to be Bosa's backup on the other side? Or are we going to see Bosa dropping in? I don't think we're going to see Bosa dropping into coverage. No. Although, don't the but Ravens drop their, their nose tackle into coverage sometimes? Yeah. Don't they do that? They yeah. do. They do it with so, everybody. Like we could but, see that from Hargrave or something. Yeah, possibly. But yeah, mm -hmm. simulated pressure is going to take over the league. That's the yeah. hot trend for this year. Everybody's going to try to do that, Niners yeah. included. And it's part of why Staley is that you know, first they reached out and you know, Kyle wanted to uh, talk to Spags. And that's when Kansas City re-upped them. And so then they move on to, to Staley to get somebody that has some knowledge in that area. And why is it the the big thing right now? Well, it doesn't seem like Kyle Shanahan has the answers for it right now. No, he got beat by it over and over and over again in the Super Bowl and against the Ravens. Yeah, and that's the thing that threw me was that I thought that Kyle would be able to go to school on simulated pressure based on facing Baltimore. Right. And and look what Baltimore did: five picks, all that pressure, those yeah. sacks. Yeah. And did Kyle learn much? Not really. You know, Kansas City well, did. 
similar things and had nine unblocked rushers in, in blitzes. No, he didn't learn. But I'm, I'll, to his credit, it seems like he's trying to learn now. It seems yeah. like he brought in yeah. Staley to, to, to teach him or at least to be the expert on this one. So it's yeah. going to be interesting to see. I mean, the Niners are a rush four team, but you can still rush right. four without it being the same four every snap. And you know where they're coming from. I think we're going to see some of that. Also, we're talking about run defense, um, Staley's a, a five-man front guy. So maybe we'll see some of that. Um, I know we were talking about Marshawn Nealon. I'm just yeah, yeah, but it, like it branches out to project that, the usage of some of these players, right? And yeah. if they go with the five man set, then that also can take Hargrave back to what he did in Philadelphia with success. So I think that it's also a way to optimize him. Is that that makes sense? The other aspect of this with simulated pressure is it now forces your hand to add players that can stop the run and blitz from the secondary. They don't yeah. have that. Yes. And Jair can do that. I don't know about the rest of them. So and, when you're evaluating a DB, part of that has to include the ability to defend against the run and blitz. And that's yeah. part of why Cooper DeGene gets talked up because he's very good at those things. Yeah. And when we're talking about simulated pressure, that's – I'll do my best to define it. You can help too. It's often when a defensive coordinator – has six, maybe seven defenders kind of lurking around the line of scrimmage, and it's completely unclear before the snap which players are rushing. It could be seven. It could be three. It's unclear, and it's new every time. It could be two defensive linemen, a linebacker, and a nickel. It could be four defensive linemen, and uh, it puts a lot of pressure on whoever's setting the protections, whether it's the quarterback or the Niners, it's the se- the, the center, to guess figure it out which way are we going to slide could be wrong a lot of the times um that's essentially what it is yeah well it's taking the core concept of shanahan's offense and applying it to the defenses we're going to show you the same thing but we're going to do a hundred different things out of it yeah and there's no way of knowing the other thing with simulated pressure is that they can also time it up so that you'll have a delayed blitz from a db and he'll be unblocked and straight to the qb Mm-hmm. Kansas City did that very well. And yes. Baltimore did too. It's where their DB was the one that made the, made the play. And so yeah. if the Niners are going to go to simulated pressure, yes. they have to add a defensive back that can blitz and stop the run. That's a great and call. So Is that Jair Brown? Is that Talano yeah. Funga? Is that Diamador Lenore? Like when, it, when Robert Sala was here, he often used K- Kwan Williams in that role. And Jimmy Ward was great at it, and Jimmy yeah. Ward too. Yeah, yeah. but they're going to yeah. need to add that now because outside of Jair, you don't really have that skill set. And but so Jair does have that skill set, and they didn't. Jair really, does. Steve didn't use him that way. He used him once, and he he didn't get the blitz. But you know, there's ways that you can do that. Yeah, you know, he proved throughout his career at Penn State that he could get to the quarterback. He can do that, but the Niners don't have a DB that can do that. They need to add one in this draft. 